Hello, I'm Chris Menard. Today's video, I'm going to cover how to get started with Microsoft Excel. So if you've never used Excel or you've only used Microsoft Excel just a little bit, this is the video for you. I'm going to cover typing in some text. We're going to type in some numbers. We'll type in some dates. And then we'll end up analyzing the data using some functions in Excel. And I'll show you how to select also. So let's go ahead and get started. Go ahead and start Microsoft Excel. And if you get an option, I want you to pick blank workbook if you have blank workbook. When you start Excel and have a blank workbook, you've got up at the top of your screen, uh, home, insert, page layout, formulas, those are called tabs. So I'm on the home tab right now. Here is the insert tab. Feel free to click on insert. Now you're on the insert tab. Go back to the home tab. We're going to stay on the home tab for this video. Below the word home, you've got groups. There's clipboard. There's font. There's the alignment group. Those are called groups. Within the groups, you have what's known as commands. So I'm going to use bold when I cover formatting text today. There's italics. I can change the font size. I could change the font color. So these are commands inside the font group on the Home tab. Let's go ahead and get started just putting in some text. This file that I'm using will be available for you. It'll be in the description of the video. And I'm going to have, you can either do it all the way from scratch, which is what I'm going to do, or I'm going to save it also with the finished product for you. So you can always go back and check your answers. So one little tip before I start typing text. In the bottom right corner, it says that I'm at 100%. I have a minus symbol, which will decrease the 100%. If you notice, my rows and columns are smaller. And now I'm going to increase. So I'm going to leave this uh, at about 140%. You don't have to do that. If you're happy at 100, leave it there. So our Excel file has columns. The columns are A, B, C, D, E. Keep on going. There's a lot of columns. There's over 16,000. Our Excel file also has rows. Row, row 1, row 2, row 3, 4. Those are rows. Where a column and a row intersect is known as a cell. So I'm in cell A1. If I click somewhere else, now I'm in cell D3. Notice the column changes and the row changes. And now I'm in cell F4. I'm going to go back to A1. You can use Excel to keep track of data and then analyze it. So for our example, we're going to have a company that has offices in multiple countries. So I'm going to type the word country in A1. You could also use Excel to keep track of your employees and their departments, your customers placing orders. So a variety of different options. I'm just trying to keep this easy. So I'm going to list just a few countries, the United States, press enter. So A1 was country, enter, US, enter, enter will move you down the screen. We'll put in France. I'm going to do Spain. One more country. Let's put in Mexico. That's enough. I could list more. I'm just trying to keep this easy. After you type in those countries, let's put in some numbers. By default, all the countries that you typed in, and including the word country, are aligned to the left because they're text. So text is automatically aligned to the left. Go to cell B1. I want to know the number of employees. I'm just going to abbreviate this as EMP. And again, I'm making up numbers. I pressed enter. I'm in cell B2. The US, we have 200 employees. France, 
I'm going to make France our headquarters in the, my example. So it has 1,500 employees. Spain is a big office with 1,200. And in Mexico, we have 900 employees. So now you just typed in numbers. So I just told you that text will be aligned to the left. Numbers by default are always aligned to the right. If you notice, cell B2 through B5 are all aligned to the right. Let's type in some dates. This is when we opened the office. So I'm going to type the word opened, which is text, and now I'm going to type in some dates. The U.S. office was opened uh, April 20th, 2020. We just opened that office. The office in France's headquarters, that was our first office, and we opened it on July 24th, 2018. Spain was the next office. That is going to be 2-18-2019. And Mexico was also opened in 2020 in the month of January 29th, 2020. So now we've typed in text. We just put in some numbers and now we've put in some dates. If you want to do some formatting, so let's do some formatting and then we'll move on to doing some Excel functions. Row 1 has country, employee that I abbreviated and opened. I want to make those bold, so I need to select them first. Pitch your mouse right in the middle of A1. Just click, don't let go, and pull to the right. And I highlighted A1 over to C1. The first cell that you select will not look like it's highlighted, but it is. It's letting you know where you highlighted from. So I started in A1. Home tab, here's the font group. I'm going to use bold. <clears throat> so now those are bold. Also, more formatting. I want to format these numbers. Notice that these numbers, 1,500 and 1,200, I would like a comma in them. So I'm going to select the entire column. So if I had numbers down here in rows 12, 13, 14, those would be selected too. The whole column's highlighted. Clicked one time on the letter B. Home tab still. I've got a group called the number group. There is a comma in it. When you click the comma, it'll put in the comma and it'll give you two decimal places by default. I am I'm looking at employees, so in this example, I don't need to see any decimals. So I'm going to do a decrease decimal. It even says show fewer decimal places. Click it once, it took away one. Click it the second time, it took away both. Feel free to do this. If you click the comma again, it'll put in two. If you wanted to add decimals, it would be increase decimal. Feel free to click it. And as you can see, it is adding decimals, but I'm going to go back to decrease and lose them. So we just use the comma style to make our employees have a comma in them. This is also just um, a preference formatting here. I want the word employees, EMP, which is text, so it's aligned to the left, but it has numbers below it, so they're aligned to the right. I want to line up employees with the text, home tab still, here's my alignment group. I know it doesn't look like it, but that text is aligned to the left. There is a line center and one more over is a line right. I'm going to click it. This just looks better when I print it. The, the text is above the numbers. Now I want to show you how to widen a column. I can widen column C by getting in between column C and column D, because remember our columns are A, B, C, D, all the way through. I can click, it says I've got a width, pull out to the right and just let go wherever you want to and you're widening a column. I'm going to do the same with the word opened that I did with employees. I'm going to click on opened one time and align it to the right.
if you want that column to be the exact width to hold whatever's in there, the longest item that's in there, again, I'm between C and D. I could obviously drag back to the left, but when you have those arrows right there, this feature is called Auto Fit. Double click. I just Auto Fit Column C. I'm going to do it again with Column B. Get in between B and C. Double click. But I actually do want a little space here, so I'm going to drag B out a little bit. And I'm going to pull C out just to have a little space, extra space in my columns. Let's go do some Excel functions. I'm leaving row 6 empty intentionally because those are my four offices. In row 7, I want to know the total number of employees we have, so I'm going to type the word total. We have been pressing enter to move down, but I want to move over to cell B7. I could either click with my mouse in B7 or I could press the tab key. The tab key will move you over to the right. Enter goes down, tab is to the right. I'm right where I need to be. I want to know the total number of employees I have right here. Home tab. I have used the font group, bold. I've used the alignment group, align to the right. I've used the number group with the comma. Let's now go to the editing group over here to the right. And it says auto sum. If you mouse over it, it basically says it's going to sum up and add up your numbers. I'm going to click it once, and it happens to grab the correct range, which is B2 through B6. That colon, colon between B2 and B6 means through. If you're wondering, well, why is it picking up B6? Because it's looking for numbers, and it is okay that it's blank. So this is actually okay. I'm going to press Enter. If you don't want to press Enter, if you're a mouse person, you can come right here and click on this check mark. It is exactly the same, except this one will leave you here. I'm going to go ahead and use this one right here. Even though I just said I was going to press enter, I'm going to click right here. If you pressed enter, it'll move you down. That's okay. So let's all go to cell A8. I want to know what's the average. I'm going to type in the word average. I'm going to grab my mouse and click over in cell B8. I want to know the average for these four numbers. Just like with some, if you include the blank, it's okay. I'm in cell B8. Don't click auto sum. You want to hit this little arrow, drop down arrow next to it. And there is the word average, known as the average function. When I click it once, it's looking for numbers, so it grabs cell B7, but that's not correct. Remember, I want the average of cells B2 through B6. B5 is also correct. I'm going to grab my mouse. I'm going to click right in the middle of cell B2 and hold down. I'm not going to let go. Now I'm going to drag down. B3, 4, 5. If you get 6, you're okay. If you leave it at 5, you're okay. I'm going to go ahead and get 6. Perfect. On the keyboard, press enter. There is your average, 950. So we've done the total, which is the sum function. This is known as your formula bar. So go back to cell B7 with me. And don't click, but just move your mouse around up here and it will say formula bar. It shows you the formula that was used to get this 3,800. I'm going to type in the word highest and hit the tab key. I was in cell A9 when I typed the word highest. A9 is highest, tab. Now I'm in cell B9. I want to know what is the highest value of these four numbers. That function in Excel is called the max function. So in this example, I didn't want to type the word max in cell A9 because when we're talking to people, we say, what was the highest number? We don't usually say what was the max number, but it's the max function. So make sure in cell B9, 
Again, we're in the editing group. We're hitting that drop down arrow, max. Same as with average, it grabbed the wrong numbers. I don't care. Click, don't let go. Pull down, let go. Perfect. Press enter. So we have 1500. This is why Microsoft Excel is so cool. If you look up there, 1500 is the highest value or the maximum. Let's change it. I'm just making this up. Let's say that Spain has been expanding and the Spain office now has 1600 employees. When I type the number 1600, my total should change, which is 3,800. My average should change, and now the highest should be 1,600. So in cell B4, just type 1600 and press Enter. And all the numbers down below changed. Now I wanted to do that to show you that. But if you do something in Excel and you say, oh, I wish I wouldn't have done that, there is the undo feature. Grab your mouse, right up here in the quick access toolbar that has these icons. You may or may not have all the icons I have, but I know you have undo. Point to undo and click it and put it back to 1200. If you can't figure out where undo is, just go type in for, go type 1200 for Spain. One more function. This will be the last one for today's video. I'm going to do the word lowest because I found the highest. I'm in cell B10. Drop down by auto sum. It is the MIN. It'll find the lowest value or the minimum value. Again, you know this already. Click on B2. Pull down to cell B6. Either press Enter on the keyboard or use the mouse. I don't care. So there you have it. We put in text. We put in numbers. We typed in some dates. We widen columns. We use the comma style right here. We also align some text to the right to make it line up easier with the EMP and opened. And we just did four Excel functions. This is a getting started in Excel. Thank you for your time. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So this file finished will be available to you in my YouTube description. Thank you.